My name is Derek Kirk Kim. I'm a writer, cartoonist, and filmmaker, and um, this is my life story. I came to America when I was uh, eight years old. I immigrated from uh, Korea, and, um, and uh, we moved to uh, Sacramento. Spent one year in Sacramento, and um, then I spent uh, all of my growing up years in the Bay Area. Yeah. I, um, I went to the Academy of Art mm -hmm. and I majored in illustration yeah. and uh, minored in uh, creative writing, but I never graduated. Yeah. I still have a year left. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm a college dropout. Okay. Well, uh, I always like to tell stories and um, I always like to write, but I also knew how to draw. I love drawing. So um, at the end of high school, I kind of, there was a period where I toyed with just being a straight prose writer, but um, I could also draw, so I figured. I should probably do comics since it's equal amounts writing and drawing. My parents are very supportive. Um, I I grew up with a white father. Yeah. I have a white stepfather, so um, I probably didn't have as much pressure as your most typical stereotype of an Asian American family, where you know both parents were pushing them to be you know doctors or lawyers or whatever. I didn't really have that. Um, my mom was very supportive. My dad, uh, my white stepdad, was. A, bit more skeptical when I was younger um, but uh, when um, when he saw that I actually had some talent I started winning some contest when I was a little kid um, I won like a, like a local uh, art contest for um, was it seatbelt safety <laughs> it was for school yeah. and I did it and, you know all of my all the kids in my school entered but I, I ended up winning and then I would win various awards like that yeah. throughout school and then I guess that gave the confidence to my dad that I could actually maybe make a living at it. Yeah. So um, then he supported me going through art school. You know, he did tell me though, if I if I dropped out, he wouldn't pay for the rest of my schooling. Yeah. Uh, at the end of my junior year, I, I got a publishing deal from a small comics company. So um, at that time, I had to make a choice. Like, I was so anxious to like start working in comics. Um, but I took the risk of, you know, a failure, and if I did, I couldn't go back to school with my dad's support. Yeah. So um, it's kind of a kind of a risk, I guess. But yeah, I guess it all worked out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't think comics is any different than any other art form. Just having more Asians in it will empower kids reading it because they'll see more creators, people they can look up to, yeah. you know, that are Asian American. Um, and then, of course, if you have Asian Americans inside the art, they're going to put their experiences into the art and then sort of reverberate even more because the characters will be Asian, yeah. hopefully. And um, so, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's definitely a big thing for me, um, making my main characters Asian American, or at the very least minorities of some yeah. kind. Not that I have anything against, um, you know, white male lead characters, but there's just so many of them. You know, and th there isn't that many for minority characters, so I'd really like to help push that. Beyond Same Difference, I mean, the last the three other graphic novels I've done, the two films that I've done, um, the novel that I'm writing right now, they, they all star Asian Americans or some minority. Um, so uh, it's definitely a conscious thing, but it's not a conscious thing in terms of the actual story, because my belief is that, you know, we're all human, and all of us, no matter what race we are, can um, play out any kind of story. So for me, the story is the most important part, but um, I don't see why a minority can't be an adventure or, you know, have the same kind of, or be wrapped up in the same kind of predicaments that, you know, lead white male characters do. I think that's up to the, um, up to the artist, yeah. the Asian American artist. You know, if that's what they want to talk about, being Asian American, that's cool. I mean, that's what they should talk about. You know, you should. Write about what you're passionate about and what you want to read or view yourself. Yeah. You know, that's the only way you're going to find the passion to actually do something great. You know, um, but for me, I, I'm. But just personally, for me, I'm more interested in. Um, well, I, I just feel like there's already so many stories about being Asian American since like every other Asian American <laughs> writes about that. I don't feel like I have that much to contribute as the the main topic of the story. You know. Um, there's already so many people that do it much better than me. Uh, you know, people like Jin um, Luen Yang, who does American Born Chinese, or 
um, you know, lots of other pro, prose writers. Um, so for me, I, I, I want to focus on um, um, Asian Americans being in the kind of stories we don't normally see them in, yeah. you know. Um, like my uh, current series that I'm working on called Tune, it's a sci-fi story. And you don't see that many sci-fi stories with Asian Americans as lead characters. If they are in sci-fi stories, they're usually like, you know, relegated to like a side character or goofy character or a villain, you know? Well, the, the main thing is just, I just want, you know, I just want the children, Asian American children um, in the future can read about something that reflects them, yeah. you know? And um, not feel unconsciously embarrassed to be Asian American. A lot of Asian American um, artists will make their main characters white. And it's, it's not even like a conscious thing. Yeah. It's just so ingrained, it's so brainwashed into us by media. So if I can help to chip away at that, yeah. so that kids growing up just see Asian American heroes as just normal, everyday uh, life, um, I think I think we can get over that barrier. Because even when I first started, like I made the first comic I did was called Cell. It's a science fiction book. Um, I made the main characters white, and I and I think it's just because I had all these perceptions of uh, what would be acceptable, you know, to the reading public, you know, I. I guess when I was that age, like, and it wasn't conscious, but I just, every book I read was about, you know, a white, uh, white lead character, you know. So I automatically did that, maybe, maybe in the back of my mind thinking that people wouldn't like it as much if, if um, the main character was Asian American. And that's a horrible thing to have in your head, you know. Yeah. I'm sure the you know, same is said by every artist, but just do it as yeah. much as you can. Um, draw as much as you can, write as much as you can, read and watch as much as you can, you know, and absorb things. Um, and um, have some perspective on your work, you know. Um, <laughs> now it shuts off. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm jealous of uh, Asian American kids growing up, people like you coming out of college, you know, right now. It's a great time to, to be working. There's so much more hope, you know. Yeah. Um, Whereas, uh, you know, like when I was in high school, I, I actually did drama as well. Mm -hmm. And I was really, into, this is like my favorite class. Yeah. My brother also did drama. But um, both of us were just like, it wasn't even an option, mm -hmm. like to do that as a living yeah. at the time. We didn't even, we didn't want to be some, you know, uh, some stereotype, you know, uh, waiter or something, you know, two lines. Like, <laughs> who wants to, you know, suffer through life like that? Mm -hmm. So the fact that it wasn't even an option for us, I think, is just really tragic. Yeah. Not that that's what I would have pursued, but the fact that I couldn't even think of it as a viable means of living is, is really sad. And, and nowadays, I think Asian American kids can actually go into the world yeah. without that, you know, yeah. with, with the thought that they could, can do that if they want. You know, when you're young, you can, you can be a little bit um, delusional in terms of where the place your work is in, you yeah. know? And uh, it's kind of hard to step back and see it from another person's eye, mm. you know. So um, listening to people that have a lot more experience than you is, is really um, is really valuable. Yeah. If you want to produce something that's going to last and have some impact on the world, you know, um, you should do, do things for the right reasons. Yeah. Um, be passionate about your work and um, uh, make yourself happy. You know, don't try to make other people. Happy. I mean, think of the audience. Don't discard them, but um, don't don't pander to what you think people will like. You know? Yeah. It just it doesn't seem like that ever produces good work or even success for that matter.